What cover crop can you grow that'll increase the protein content of your summer forages, improve the soil health, add fertility like nitrogen to the soil, while also offering feed for beneficial insects? I'm Rob from Dowdle Family Farms, and one of the things that we've been trying to do over the farms over the last few years is grow much more of our swine feed on our farm. Uh, cool season cover crops offer a lot of great nutritious feed for the livestock, but the problem that we run into with cool season crops is they cycle over a period of 90 days of growth or 120 days of growth. Cool season cover crops have lots of clovers and many other things, but those clovers are normally finished growing by end of March, beginning of April. Warm season cover crops are an outstanding crop to go to increase soil fertility and to increase the availability of feed for your livestock, especially pastured pigs. Summer forages offer a great opportunity for quick growth that you don't get with cool season cover crops like ours. Uh, during the summer, crops can grow and cycle within 30 or 40 days. For example, this cover crop was planted less than 45 days ago. We'll have the pigs on here, it looks like, for 5 or 10 days. We'll move the pigs off and it'll be ready to regraze again in another 30 days or so. In fact, after that additional 30 days, the sorghum sedan grass will be probably five or six feet tall rather than just the three or four feet tall that it is right now. The problem that we run into with summer forages, however, is that we don't have the variety of legumes that add protein to the feed mix but also nitrogen to the soil that we have with cool season cover crops. Uh, there are two crops that grow really well in this type of environment, however. One of them is sun hemp, which we cannot grow in Mississippi because Mississippi thinks that it's a noxious weed. That's another video for another day. But one that we can grow are cowpeas, and it's probably a plant that you're familiar with in one form of fashion or another. Cowpeas are a warm season cover crop. They have deep tap roots. They're drought tolerant. Uh, we can plant them once the soil temperatures reach 65 degrees or so. That's early May for us, late April. Uh, and then once they get established, they have a deep tap root and they really do not have much of an issue with drought in our experiences. They work really great in cover crops, mixes with sorghum sedan grass, hybrid pearl millet, and many others. The dry matter content of most of the cowpeas ranges in the 20% range with about 18% protein. Now the lysine content is a little bit lower. It's only 3.3% or so roughly of the percentage of protein. Um, pigs need closer to the 4% range, 4.5% range, depending on how much protein they're getting. Uh, however, if the cow peas go to seed, the seed vastly increases the nutritive capabilities of the cow peas. Now, cow peas you may be familiar with in the form of Crowder peas, black eyed peas, uh, pink eye peas purple hole peas, anything along those lines. We've grown iron and clay cow peas for the last four or five years. They're cheap, the seed is easy to get because deer hunters use them a lot. This year, however, I'm excited because we now have either some Chinese red or red ripper cow peas. We'll talk about those varieties more in a few moments. Cow peas are divided into a couple different types of characteristics. One, are they viney or bushy? Uh, bushy varieties tend to be grown more for seed for human consumption and then vining varieties will vine and spread all over the place. The other characteristic that you may notice within cow peas are are they short season or long season duration. Uh, the iron and clay cow peas that I've traditionally grown uh, are mostly viney cow peas from what I've noticed anyway, but they're a long season crop so they they grow a very long period of time and they don't go to seed very quickly. These red ripper cowpeas, for example, uh, will go to seed probably within another 30 or 40 days. Uh, I believe I'm already seeing some flower pods on them already. The thing that's the most exciting about the Chinese red or, and the red ripper cowpeas is that they're aggressive varieties. They grow very quickly right after planting, and most importantly, they regrow after grazing. I'm gonna take you around to some of the paddocks and show you where I've mown the cowpeas and where deer and other wildlife have eaten them as well. This area right here of the field the pigs are in, um, this cover crop that you see before you, you can see the iron and clay cow peas. It's the kind of 
uh, rounded pointed shaped leaves dark green mostly uh, in that mix but over here I mowed this with a zero turn lawnmower bagged it and fed it as green chop to the pigs while they were in the woods over there behind this field uh, you can tell that this stuff has regrown pretty dramatically uh, I originally cut it at six inches because the field's kind of bumpy it was cut a little bit shorter than six inches because of how the mower kind of bogged down in the dirt but all that to say you can tell that things like this um, hybrid pearl millet right there uh, has regrown uh, you can see where it's cut and it's regrown five or six inches uh, but you can also tell from this cow pea here uh, as well this cow pea uh, was you can tell where it was mown right there and then it sent up more branches as gaining height and some weight uh, as well this part of the taproot is only about six inches long or so but you can tell that it's developing that good long taproot so the cow peas grow really well uh, there's some areas uh, in the woods behind there i've tested the two different types of cowpeas, Chinese reds and red ripper cowpeas, along with some forage soybeans. And in that paddock, I've had deer grazing through and eating the cover crop. Uh, it's a long story, but they handle the grazing pressure from the wildlife as well. <laughs> Speaking of wildlife, uh, wildlife really love red ripper cowpeas. Uh, I've seen turkeys. I've also seen deer uh, and, of course, our livestock as well eating. Uh, the peas out of the holes off of the vines and of course live, uh, most of the wildlife and livestock will eat the vines and the leaves as well. One thing about cow peas is that they bloom during the summer which around us here in Mississippi we have a, what's known as a summer dearth for our beneficial insects especially for our honeybees there's just not much blooming this time of the year and honeybees uh, can forage off of the flowers, but cow peas, like many other legumes and a few other plants, have what are known as extra floral nectaries. And what those are are just little parts of the stem where they will emit sugars to help provide feed for beneficial insects, uh, whether they're ants, uh, lady beetles, uh, leaf hoppers, um, honeybees, whatever to help fight uh, pests on the plant. Uh, and so the beneficial insects, honeybees for example, act, gather nectar from those extra floral nectaries uh, and it provides a good feed for them as well. You may notice that the pigs in this paddock have been eating the buckwheat. Um, this Berkshire Gilt is doing that right there. Um, At the moment, they're more interested in the buckwheat I hope you found this video helpful. Give cow peas a try. The Red Ripper cow peas grow back really well after they're grazed and mown. They work really great, provide a lot of good protein, help fix nitrogen in the soil, and they're helpful for the beneficial insects as well. Rem do remember that Chinese red cow peas and Red Ripper cow peas regrow after grazing or mowing, whereas uh, things like iron and clay cow peas, which are probably the easiest to find, are more of a long season variety you plant in the spring and they'll be ready to be harvested in the fall. I hope you have a great day. Take care and we'll talk to you soon.